in this instance, the UK is providing for its own people and not for the people of Zimbabwe or Namibia. And so it's unequal. It's not equality that the UK should have vaccines or whatever it might be if we're talking about something else. It's not equality if the UK has it and Namibia doesn't have it. How is that equality? I mean, this is steeped, all this language, it's steeped in that open border, internationalist, globalist, anti-nation state, anti-democracy, terror, tyranny that we continue to be subjected to and which, as I said, actually results in practice in governments abandoning their own people and prioritising the needs and interests of people from all over the world. More of the same is coming with this post-Covid treaty, further erosion of our nation states and with it our democracy and with it our government's duty to be concerned about the people of their own countries uh, and not people from all over the world. Okay, racism. I mentioned at the start this report that the government commissioned and that has found much to the disgust of the left, much to the disgust of people like Diane Abbott and David Lammy, professional race baiters, people who make a living out of their skin colour, people who are professional skin colour. That's what that's that's what they rest on. That is their identity. That is that is what they are. Obsessed with it. Always, always the victim. And always blaming someone else. David Lammy even said he wasn't going to talk about this report because it was detrimental to his mental health. <sighs> always the victim. Absolutely always. And the people who want to be victims, the people who want to find an excuse, a reason for whatever it is that is wrong in their lives. So if they haven't succeeded at something, the problem isn't them. The problem is racism. And if you can't find any surface racism, you know what we, we, what we used to call racism? Actual hatred between people of different skin colours, for example. Actual active discrimination um, active disadvantage suffered by people, deliberately suffered or imposed upon people because of skin colour. If you can't find any of that, and you can't, because there are laws in this country that prevent black people being discriminated against, for example. So if you can't find any of that, you've got to make up something else. And there's an invisible racism now. It's in the line of what the, the left talks about now, unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is when you're not a racist, but you are anyway. You just don't know you are. So they find it when it's not there. The actual racism that I mentioned, what we used to think of as racism, hasn't disappeared. But for normal people in normal people's lives, it's really not that much of an issue anymore. And what this report found is that people are not actually being discriminated against, non-white people, I should say, are not being discriminated against either by law or in society. And for those who want to be victims, because victimhood, remember, has an exalted status in society today. People are desperate to belong to a victim group. It makes them feel special, but it also gives them, more importantly, it gives them a reason, an excuse for any of their own failings in life. So when a report concludes that this structural racism, I don't know what it is either, neither do its proponents, by the way, or institutional racism isn't actually a reality, those who desperately want to be the victims of racism are very upset indeed about this so this is from the daily mail and this is the part you might not be wholly familiar with that boris johnson doesn't agree with elements of this report he truly is appalling 
this article goes into the views and I've picked this one because she's not speaking only for herself. She's speaking for a lot of other people who have come out with similar responses to this. The racism industry, I call it. Those who, who survive on the assumption of the existence of racism in British society. Boris Johnson admits he doesn't agree with elements of landmark race report as Stephen Lawrence's mother says it gives racists the green light and slams authors as not in touch with reality. Now, a lot of the problems we've got in society today actually happened in the wake of the murder of Stephen Lawrence. A lot of the racial division you would think that a post-racist society would look for colour blindness. That in order to move, in order to move towards a colour or an, a post-racist society, we would be looking to move to a colour blind society. The very, very opposite was concluded after the investigation and the report, the Macpherson inquiry into the murder of Stephen Lawrence and how it was handled by police and authorities. It concluded that colorblind policing must be eliminated, that actually colorblind policing was not, and in, by extension colorblind authority, colorblind society, was not actually what should be aspired to. Instead, we should take color into account at every opportunity. It encouraged us and it shaped policing from that moment onwards. It, it was also the introduction of terms like institutional racism, which again is never really explained in language that we can all understand. But this is the Macpherson Inquiry and the Macpherson Report was the birth of all of this. And it specifically said that we should not and cannot move towards a colour blind society. That we must instead make colour and make race central to governance, to policing and to society more broadly. And if you take out, as this report has tried to do, if you take that out, you push back on the race obsession in society that was encouraged by the Macpherson report. And those who want to keep racial division alive because they make a living from it, or as I said, they get their victim status from it, are very upset by it. So right, it goes on. Boris Johnson admits he doesn't agree with elements of a landmark race report as Stephen Lawrence's mother says it gives racists the green light. The document published by the Commission on Race and Ethnic Disparities said geography, family influence, socioeconomic background, culture and religion all affect life chances more than racism. The Prime Minister insisted there are serious issues that our society faces to do with racism and that work needed to be done to fix it but warned the report's findings weren't necessarily aligned with the thoughts of those at number 10. He said, this is a very interesting piece of work. I don't say the government is going to agree with everything in it, but it has some original and stimulating work in it. I think people would need to read and con to consider. There are very serious issues that our society faces to do with racism and that we need to address. Well, he is actually right about that. But I bet a few quid that he's not right for the right reasons. There are issues about racism in society that we need to deal with. And largely that we need to stop this obsession, this victim status and the anti-white hatred, which I'll get on to in a second. He never talks about that. He never talks about that as an issue of race. There are race problems in this country and they are exacerbated by the very people who are condemning this report, by the very people who don't want a post-racism 
society. They're the problem. That's the real race problem we face. And some of the findings of this report, as I wrote in my Sunday column yesterday, it's actually found that, in, for example, in terms of education, non-white kids in many areas or in, 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 across the board in, in various uh, elements of education are doing better than white kids. Yet there's nobody jumping up and down and talking about equality. Let me take you to something I said that I found out this week, this was, which was horrifying. And if Boris Johnson really wants to talk about the issues involving race in society that need to be fixed, then he needs to start talking about the race obsession of these groups and the influence that they have in society, the racial division that they are stirring up, the tensions that are stirred up by groups like Black Lives Matter, the active and open discrimination against white people in the jobs market. Those are real issues that he could be talking about and those are the real issues about race that need to be fixed, Boris Johnson, in our society. However, it gets much worse than that. I was genuinely horrified to read this this week. And horrifying is in the headline. Horrifying guidance says toddlers need to be taught about white, white privilege and systemic racism. Gobsmacking new guidance from education bodies, including the National Education Union, states that children below the age of six need to recognise racist behaviours and develop anti-racist views and their teachers need to understand about white privilege so that children are steered onto the right course. The Birth to Five report claims young minds are brimming with racism, their rampant racial prejudice and misconceptions are in danger of being maintained, or these are all quotes by the way from the report, or from the guidance, that comes from the biggest union, teachers union in the country. Rampant racial prejudice from children under five are in danger of being maintained or reinforced unless addressed by a teacher who has undergone essential practitioner training. The training will enable teachers to teach kids about white privilege, systemic racism, and how racism affects children and families in early years settings. So let's Put that into, let's, let's picture that. So you've got a room, classroom full of five-year-olds and the teacher's banging on about white privilege, systemic racism, which is, of course, evil whites again, evil whites trampling all over the perpetual victim, which is everyone who isn't white. And a little five-year-old white kid is sitting there surrounded by non-white kids and thinking, there's something wrong with me. I'm a racist. I'm privileged. I'm essentially evil. I'm a threat to all the little kids who sit around me that aren't white. There's something wrong with me because I'm white. That is what any white child who is sitting in the room hearing this abuse will be thinking. It's the impression that will be imposed upon them. We're talking about small children who will be subject to abuse at school because of the colour of their skin. And I remember, and I think I mentioned, I might have mentioned this last week, I've certainly mentioned it recently, about a mother who, who, who I did mention it last week actually, um, about Ray Honeyford's school and I interviewed her when I was writing my first book and her kid, her white kid, was in school and was mercilessly bullied for being white. She had to take him out of the school and while he was bullied for being white, he was called racist by the kids who were bullying him. This is a charter for the emotional, psychological abuse of white children 
and it is a charter for non-white children of any description to bully and persecute white children and it is for children under the age of six and this is being put forward by the National Education Union as guidance. I'll read just a little bit more because it's horrifying. The report put together by the National Day Nurseries Association, the Association for the Association for Professional Development in Early Years, as well as the NEU, counters government guidance that already acknowledges racism needs to be addressed on the playmat. <laughs> This is a Tory government, remember. While many would argue there is no room for racism teaching at nurseries and schools at all, the government's existing guidance insists that alongside learning to count and read, five-year-old kids should know some similarities and differences between different religious and cultural communities in this country, drawing on their experiences. They're five! And what has been read in class? The chairman of the Commons Education Select Committee, Robert Halfen, responded this is just unacceptable but why are you saying it's unacceptable for you this the last quote by the way know some similarities etc is from the government it's from the government drawing on their experiences they're five years old what experiences that's from the government and the government same government then says that this latest guidance is unacceptable as if we are in i i don't know what we're in alice i wonder i, I just don't it's absolutely incredible government goes on to say this dogma and doctrine is totally out of place we have all got to combat racism but this is the wrong way to go about it but you have just i've just read out the government's own guidance on it this is tory this is so typically tory say all the right things do right let, let me let me, have, let me put it this way the tories sound like tories act like Labour. That's basically how it works. They'll do all the things that Labour does, go along with all the PC multicultural rubbish that Labour does, and then make a speech to say they're doing the very opposite. That's the Tories. But this is a genuinely, genuinely scandalous, and I guarantee you that it will go ahead. This will be taught in school. We will have little five-year-olds sitting around with their crayons being told that the little white kid in the group is a racist oppressor and is systemically, whatever the hell it's going to be, responsible for systemic and institutional racism and is privileged. This little white kid over here, who may come from a family with not two pennies to rub together, but they're still privileged. And all the non-white kids are all oppressed victims and this poor little kid over here is responsible for it. Guaranteed it's going to happen. So Boris Johnson, if you really want to deal with the issues surrounding race that need to be fixed in this country, there's your starting point. Stop this psychological, mental abuse of small children in the classroom because of their skin colour. And stop with the white privilege rubbish. It's absolute nonsense. And actually this report, if you read it, will show that whites are becoming extremely disadvantaged in this society and the only racial group that can be lawfully discriminated against. So there's your race issue, Boris Johnson. If you want to do something useful, which of course you don't, but if you, if by some miracle you decided to do something useful, that might be it.